Hi everyone, modern pages are one of the core foundational content types in SharePoint. The portals and SharePoint news experiences are built with modern pages. In the past, I made a video how to migrate pages in SharePoint using Microsoft Graph API. In this video, I'm going to highlight further improvements of this incredible capability which allows to work with pages in SharePoint. There are several handpoints that helps to list, create, publish or delete pages, for instance. I walk you through two different scenarios. The first one involves the migration of an existing page and in the second I'll show you how to create a new page adding and using HTML. All right, let's get started. Here I am in the global HR communication site in SharePoint. I have this page open, vision and priorities. I want to migrate this page, the content of this page, to another communication site that I have here already open in this other tab, call it Global IT. So consuming the Microsoft Graph API, I'm going to recreate exactly the same page on a different communication site in SharePoint Online. So this is the site and you can use a simple syntax just by renaming and reusing this URL, otherwise you can get the ID of this site. There is an easy way to find the current ID, the GUID of a SharePoint site. You can type next to the slash underscore API site slash ID. If you type return, you have the GUID of this SharePoint site and you can use this GUID with Microsoft Graph API to collect content coming from this site. Now let me go back because I already have this and I'm going to show you an alternative and easy way to interact with this site. Now here I have a Visual Studio Code instance already open. Here there are different way that you can play with the Microsoft Graph API. For example, you can use Visual Studio Code and I made a video how you can configure and set up Visual Studio Code to play with the Graph API or you can use any other REST HTTP client like Insomnia or Postman. It's up to you. There is also the Graph API Explorer which is extremely easy to use. Now I'm going to follow this approach. I already got a valid token which will allow me to consume the Graph API. Now that I have done this, I can consume this endpoint to collect all pages coming from the global HR communication site. Here you can put the name which is more easy to use or you can add the GUID that we have seen before. Now I'm going to use the name because it's more easy to use and if I execute this REST API, I have here some value. I have an array with all pages contained in site pages. Now the page that I want to migrate is called vision10.aspx. What I can do here is copy all this thing because I'm going to reuse it later. So now that I got this thing, I'm going to copy and I'm going to show you how you can, making another post request, recreate this, this page. Assuming that you are able to consume the Graph API, I'm using in this particular case an application permission approach with the Graph API. It means that I'm impersonating the SharePoint app user principle in uh, on Azure, which allows you to consume the Graph API with elevated privileges according to the permission that you have done and set up in the app registration section or blade in Azure behind the Microsoft 365 subscription. Now that I got the content of this page, I can recreate this page under the global IT communication site. Now let me find the right one that I want to have. It is this one, post page. Here I have even an example and this is the endpoint. I'm going to use this endpoint. I'm going to perform this post. Here I have my bearer token which will allow me to consume the Graph API. And now I can test it what I got before. So here I already have the description, 
Then there are additional properties like the e tag, the ID, last modified date time, but these things are no needed. What is really important is the description, name, web URL, title, page layout, the thumbnail, web URL. In this case, the image is hosted in the stock images of SharePoint, so this is reachable anywhere in every kind of SharePoint online environment. Then there are other attributes like promotion kind, show comments. If you want, you can set this true. If you want to show at the bottom the section to add comments, recommended page, you can set also this um, to true if you want. Then there is the title area. This is very important. Let me open it. Uh, let me open exactly this page. This is the title area. It's a plain text area. There is only the title, but as you may already know, there are different page layout for the title area. You can set a background image if you want, the title on the um, centered horizontally. It's up to you, but in this case, I have a plain text and you have to mention this thing in the title area section. Its layout is plain, text above title, how we work, text alignment left. The, this is the title that will be displayed and now this is the new attribute added in this endpoint of the graph API which are in public preview I remember you and it is called canvas layout this is very important even if you want to get the content of a page now let me show you in a bit let me open and before to make this post let me open another HTTP request that I have here before but before to do it let me get this ID for this page let me close this response and now I'm going to use a different a different request and a different URL I'm going to place here this ID that was already placed but if you want to get the full content of the page the body of the page you have to expand the property canvas layout. Every web part that you had in a page, it's stored in this under this attribute in the JSON payload called canvas layout. And this is exactly what you need if you want to recreate exactly the same page. Now let me run this query so we can we can see immediately what I'm talking about. Here there is this one, the canvas layout. And here I can see that there is an horizontal action sections. There is one column. The emphasis is strong. There is a column and then there is a web part. Here I can see that the web part, it's a text editor web part because there is the inner HTML. Theoretically, you can add even a web part, a text editor web part with the HTML. That's it. But this is what exactly what I need. So I can copy the page layout attribute. I already made this before and I can reuse it to recreate this page. So it's time now to go on post page and under canvas layout I have exactly this thing already added. It's time now to run this post query HTTP request to see if the page will be created. Before to do it, let me go under site pages of the global AT. Just to double check, let me make a refresh. Just to double check if the vision 10.aspx page is not here. And as you can see, it's not here. Now, it's time to run this post request and let's see if the page will be created. Let me click on send request. Now, I got a response, HTTP created, and I have very important the, the ID of this new page created. When you create the page, this is created in draft. It's not yet published. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using an application permission approach, so the user, nobody will see the page created until this is published. Now that I got this ID, I can go on this other post request that will publish this page. I'm going to insert here the, the ID of my page pages. I added here now the GUIDI 
my page and now I can click on publish. If I send this request, now I have this status 204. This means that if I go now in the global IT site pages and if I refresh this uh, website, I can see now this exactly this article recreated under global IT communication site now. I have exactly the same content. Let me open it, this other page, just to double check. As you can see, it is exactly the same content recreated under global IT communication site. Pretty cool, right? Now let me show you again what is really important to recreate this page under another SharePoint site or across tenants. So let me go on post pages and this is the end point that you have to consume and let's double check again the properties needed. Description, name, web URL, title, page layout, thumbnail, web URL, promotion kind, show, comments. This part it's absolutely important, title area and then canvas layout. That's it. This is all you need to recreate a page in another SharePoint site. And as you can see, as we have seen before, you can get the content of a, on a specific page in SharePoint by expanding this property you are going to collect the full body of the article or news or page that you want to migrate. Alright, we have seen how to use Microsoft Graph API to create and migrate pages in SharePoint. I hope that you enjoyed this video, if yes, please consider to subscribe, like and put a comment down below, let me know what do you think about this video. I hope to see you next time. Bye.